Today I'm going to teach you how to make those buttery smooth 3D print time lapses. I'll walk you through what you need, how to set it up, and some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Let's get into it. First, of course, you'll need a 3D printer. I have the Anycubic Cobra, which is a great printer if you're just starting out. The same concepts apply for most 3D printers. You'll just need to make some minor adjustments for your 3D printer. Next is a camera. I'll be using the GoPro Hero 10 Black, but if you have a DSLR or a phone, that should also work. Then you're also gonna need a remote. A wired remote will be most reliable, but might restrict where your camera is placed. Wireless remotes also work. In fact, I'll be using the GoPro wireless remote. I'll leave links to everything I'm using in the description below. Before we go any further, I want to talk about how all of this will work. Let's start with time lapses. A time lapse is a photography technique used to speed up events that are typically slow. Most modern cameras have this feature built in. The camera will take a picture every so often and stitch those together into a single video. You might see parameters such as 5x, 10x, or an interval setting such as 10 seconds or a minute, and these determine how often a picture is taken. And because only a single picture is taken over an extended period of time, the final video gives the illusion of time speeding up. This works great for things like clouds moving across the sky, where the movement is over the entire frame. But when you try to use these built-in features on a 3D printer, you get something like this, where the print head is all over the place. And this can be quite distracting for someone who's watching the 3D print grow. So the solution is to tell the 3D printer to move the print head out of the way before taking a picture. This will ensure that your final video will have a clear view of the print as it's growing. The clever thing about this approach to making time lapses is that moving the print head out of the way before taking a picture will also be the thing that triggers taking the picture. We're gonna put the remote on one side of the print head so that when it moves into a specific location, it will trigger the remote and tell the camera to take a picture. So first, we need a way to mount the remote to the 3D printer. You wanna make sure that it's mounted in such a way that as the Z axis moves, your remote will move with it and be in the same X and Y position no matter what layer is being printed. For my 3D printer, I found some screws on the back where I can mount a custom fit holder for my remote. You just need to make sure it can handle a bit of pressure when the print head is trying to press the button on the remote. Next, you'll need a way to emulate a finger to poke at a button. I don't recommend you using your own finger or anyone else's finger, so I 3D printed one instead. Because the shell of my print head is made of metal, I put a magnet inside the finger so that I could position the finger exactly where I needed it. Once you have that set up, you'll need to figure out exactly what position the print head needs to be in to press the remote button. You can do this by experimenting a bit, but I've found that the fastest way is to connect directly to the printer and send G-code commands to it. I use software called Pronterface and can send commands such as G28 to Auto Home and G0 to move the print head. On my printer, the x-axis is the most important, but it's also useful to note where you want the y-axis to be while you're doing this. And finally, you'll need to mount your camera. Make sure it's in a stable position and take a few test photos to make sure the lighting is okay. You also want to make sure you can plug your camera in, since many prints will last longer than most camera batteries. Now it's time to prepare your print file. I'll be using Cura as my slicer. Cura has a plugin for time lapses that does exactly what we need. Move the print head to a specified location after each layer. It even has a useful wait time parameter so that your camera has time to take the picture. Once you have the model loaded, add the time lapse post processing script and enter the values from the previous step. But there's a problem. Some remotes, like the GoPro one, won't take a picture when you press the button but when you let go of the button. This means that your print head might be moving again when your camera takes the picture. So we need to emulate the full finger poking experience. The Cura Timelapse plugin doesn't have this feature, so I wrote my own plugin called Timelapse with Poke. I'll provide a link to the plugin in the description as well as installation instructions. It's basically the same plugin with a poke distance parameter. All right, if you've gotten this far, you should have a basic time-lapse setup 
and you can start taking photos. Once you have your photos, you'll need to stitch them together into a video. Leave a comment below if you're interested in a tutorial about that process. And finally, I wanted to share some tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. GoPros aren't really meant for low light scenarios. In my case, I have an enclosure that doesn't let in a lot of light. So I started out getting really low quality grainy photos. You can fix that with more light, but I ended up switching over to a digital camera that handles low light a lot better. The digital camera also gave me more control to take longer exposure photos. Getting the location of the print head right is super important. If it's not far enough, the button just won't get pressed and you won't get any photos. If it's too far, you'll either break your remote holder or you might get layer shifts. So you need to get it perfectly right. There's little room for error, maybe about a millimeter or so. After using the GoPro remote for a while, I decided to switch over to a micro switch, which has a lot more give and allows more flexibility in the exact location of the print head. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing to my channel and leave a comment below with the awesome time lapses that you're making. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can create with this method.